Diabetic medications that can give you gallbladder disease, especially if you're on Victoza, Ozempic, Trulicity, Robalsis, Bidrian. Listen up. These agents can give you, or some of you, gallbladder disease, and it can hurt. Not everyone will get that problem though. So let's dive in. I am Dr. Ahmed Tergen. I'm an endocrinologist who treats diabetes every day, so many times, yet still in love with it. New research suggests that using GLP-1 analogs, such as, again, Victoza, Trulicity, Ozempic, Rebelsis, Bidrin, these are used to treat type 2 diabetes and is connected with an increased risk of bile duct and gallbladder illness in people with diabetes. Now, GLP-1 analogs and DPP-4 inhibitors, they are incretin-based diabetic medicines that are only recently becoming more popular, right? But they are suggested as second or third line therapy for type 2 diabetes because of their safety and efficacy profile. Now, researchers have found that people with type 2 diabetes who use glucagon like peptide or GLP-1 analogs such as Victoza or Trulicity or Ozempic to treat the, their diabetes are at increased risk of developing bile duct and gallbladder illness. Again, not everybody will get that, so we'll talk about the risk factors. GLP-1 analogs are drugs that actually mimic the hormone GLP-1, which regulates the blood sugar levels, especially after you eat. So they're typically used in combination with other medications, and that's typically metformin, and most of the time doctors are supposed to use that medication right after metformin. Now, studies which are based on real-world data indicate that incretin-based medications do not appear to raise the risk of acute pancreatitis in large groups, but anecdotal reports keep coming on pancreatitis, so I personally have seen a few cases of severe pancreatitis. So if you have history of pancreatitis, these medications also may not be for you. Now, since the use of GLP-1 analogs has been shown to increase the risk of bile duct and gallbladder events, I would say, you know, physicians should discuss it with the patients and patients should be aware of this possibility and exercise caution when prescribing these medications, especially for someone with history of gallbladder disease or someone with risk factors for gallbladder disease. Now, what are the risk factors for gallbladder disease then, right? Well, gallbladder disease is a relatively common condition that actually can cause quite a bit of pain and some other problems. While there are many different risk factors for gallbladder disease, some of the most important to one include as being overweight or obese. Now, having diabetes and having a family history of the condition also adds up. Additionally, women are more likely to develop gallbladder disease than the men, and people of Native American or Hispanic descent are also at higher risk. So, if you have any of these risk factors or more than one risk factor, it is important to be aware of the signs and symptoms of gallbladder disease as well, so you can actually seek treatment if necessary, if you are taking those medications especially. Now, that can include pain in the upper abdomen, nausea, vomiting, bloating, or even jaundice. Now, we use DPP-4 inhibitors such as Genevia and Trojanta. They're not necessarily related to the increased risk of gallbladder or bile duct disease based on a study done over 71,000 new diabetic medication users who were followed for an average of three years. Having said that, Genevia and Trojanta are medicines that are, they really have only a modest effect. So they have a $500 price tag on it, so I'm not a big fan of them. Now, the use of GLP-1 analogs, it was associated with a statistically significant increase in the chance of developing bile duct and gallbladder disease in the same study. You know, the risk was increased by a whopping 79%. Now, current use of GLP-1 analogs was also found to be associated with statistically significant 200% increase in the probability of undergoing cholecystectomy, which is removing your gallbladder. But the DPP-4 inhibitors was not found to be associated with that risk. But like I said, but they don't really work well. Another study included uh, more than 1.5 million type 2 diabetics, and 165 of them were admitted to the hospital with acute pancreatitis. So that's a lot of people, even though it's a larger group. But when compared to current use of two or more anti-diabetic agents, the current use of incretin-based medications such as Trulicity or Ozempic or Rebelsis, they were not necessarily related to a higher risk of hospitalization for acute pancreatitis, 
in those larger studies. A subgroup analysis by the category produced results that were similar to overall results as well. So I would say this though, you know, while the data points to GLP-1 analogs as having the greatest potential for raising the risk of uh, bile duct or gallbladder disease, this must be weighed against their recognized advantages that include lowering the body weight, decreasing the risk of cardiovascular and cerebrovascular events such as stroke and heart attacks. Now, if you're enjoying this video and learning something, please click on the thumbs up, subscribe and share the content. Back to our topic. So what do we do? Take it or leave it. Well, the addition of GLP-1 agents in addition to metformin, if necessary, to insulin is a very sensible choice in patients with uncontrolled type 2 diabetes and uh, obesity. According to the current guidelines that, that is also promoting and supporting that idea, assuming that there is no history of pancreatic or gallbladder disease or thyroid cancer, like medullary thyroid cancer. In addition, if you're worried about all of these potential side effects, or if you are unable to take these medications because of a medical condition like gallbladder disease or pancreatitis, you should definitely consider trying sugar MD advanced glucose support, which, in my opinion, is very effective in helping to maintain your blood sugars in a good range. And side effect profile is also extremely good. How about pancreatic cancer? Would or can these agents cause pancreatic cancer? Well, according to consistent findings, there is a very low risk of pancreatitis associated with GLP-1 class of drugs. However, it is unclear whether the low risk of pancreatitis and the more frequently observed increase in lipase levels, for example, in the blood, are they an indication of a subclinical inflammatory effect that over time could increase the risk of pancreatic cancer? We don't know. As a general rule, the effects of GLP-1 receptor agonists are more noticeable when compared to the effects of TPP-4 inhibitors, which is understandable given that you know, GLP-1 receptor agonists such as Trulicity or Ozempic or Rebelsus, they mimic the pharmacological effect of the real GLP-1 that we produce. On the other hand, DPP-4 inhibitors such as Genevia or Trigenta, they raise the GLP-1 levels to a slightly higher than physiological levels. So that's why it's not as bad when it comes to side effects. Well, that's it for today. If you think this video helped you, make sure you subscribe to avoid missing any of our new content which is published three times a week. So stay happy, stay healthy, and I'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying this channel so far and I hope you subscribed already. If you didn't, do it. And if you did, watch this video right there. I think that will help you too.